Tim, let's start by talking about the machine behind us here, the Twin Star. There aren't an awful lot of them around. They're a very unique machine. Tell us about its origins and history. All righty. Um, the um, Twin Star was uh, built and designed by uh, Farrington Aircraft. Um, Farrington Aircraft worked out of, of um, Paducah, Kentucky, and um, they were, um, rumor has it from previous employees of the company that uh, Mr. Farrington was planning on actually certifying them. It was going to be a certified gyroplane, but he was uh, producing and selling kits of the machines. And unfortunately, Mr. Farrington passed away, not in an aircraft wreck of any kind. It was a medical issue. And his wife apparently was not quite so much of a fan of aviation, I'm told, as he was. And the uh, company assets were auctioned off and the employees were kind of unable to purchase the company. 25 kits were made that we're aware of. There may be some more, but those are the only ones we've been able to track down. Um, I've got together with a couple of other Twin Star owners, and we started up a, a web page and to track serial numbers and histories and, and uh, get accounts from owners and employees of the company on the uh, machines. And, and we got a hold of some CAD drawings for the airframe and other pieces so that we can keep our machines going. All the machines that we're aware of are flying except for one. And you've probably heard this kind of story before. Someone bought the machine, got no training, and uh, bent it up. No fatalities or injuries, but uh, I haven't heard of it being repaired yet. Other than that, all of the Twin Stars are still out there flying and in flying condition and, and doing well. If you own a Cirrus today or if you're considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Now this is, uh, is not what people think of when they associate with the term gyrocopter. This is a it, it shows signs of its intent to be uh, certified. It, it has a, a Lycoming engine and some other real aircraft touches. Yes, it does. Most all of them have Lycoming O320s. Some Twin Stars have the 150 horsepower variant and some have the 160 horsepower variant. This one came out of an R22. It was made to be a training machine with some cross-country capabilities, sort of more of a, almost a GA-ish, if you will, gyroplane. I don't like to call them gyrocopters, being that gyrocopter is a uh, copyrighted product name for the Benson gyrocopters. I actually like the term auto gyro the best. I don't know who in the FAA came up with the term gyroplane, but when I use it with uh, the general public, they think I'm talking about some kind of fixed wing, you know, some weird plane. No. So I think the inventor should be the one that chooses the name for the aircraft. So I, I like to use the term auto gyro. Now you've chosen a machine that wasn't in serial production very long. What about the other parts other than the engine on the aircraft? I know you, you have replaced the rotor blades, for example. Where do you go for parts when you run into that kind of issue? Well, thankfully, it's experimental. So that helps out a great deal. And as you said, the engine's a Lycoming, so that's not too much of a problem. The prop is from a famous manufacturer still in existence, so that's, that's uh, not a problem. Good news for the Twin Star owners is that the rotor head is basically made to standards that most of the two plane machines in the experimental field use. So I can use a RAF rotor head, I can use a sport copter rotor head, and their blades just fit right in and work perfectly. Um, the other body parts, uh, that's sheet metal and, um, and uh, steel tubing. And uh, I am not a builder. Um, I've tried it, not my thing. I barely find enough time to, to fly. I'm a pilot, not a builder. So, But thankfully, I've got an, uh, an A&P and a, a machine shop that's friendly to uh, experimental aircraft that are willing to help out. And since we have the CAD CAM drawings of basically every component, um, I can go to them with the drawings or the old part, and I can feel pretty confident that I can keep this machine in, in a restored state for as long as I wish to. An added bonus to gyros is that there aren't a lot of wearable parts on them. So it's not like I have to replace canvas or other time-limited parts. And that's a nice advantage. Tim, this thing's a little bit big to get on a trailer. It looks like pretty much any place you'd want to go to a fly-in, you'd have to actually fly in. That's true. And I have uh, thankfully not had to trailer it yet. And that's exactly what I do. I fly it to all the fly-ins uh, that I go to. It has pretty good range. It's a nice, reliable, certified aircraft engine that I have on the back. Still has the plate. 
So I feel pretty confident going across country. It's comfortable and stable enough to fly cross country even if you get into a little bit of weather. And thanks to my Garmin with WX weather, I, I can uh, see it coming sometimes. So yeah, I, I preferred not to ever have to trailer it. With the big 30 foot blades, it takes more than one person to take the blades on and off if I did want to trailer it. So um, it's, a, it's a machine that it's, it's not a... Um, uh, not a trailer what, queen. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, it is not a trailer queen, and, and none of the twin star owners that I know of use them as such. All right. In closing, tell us some other things that might not be obvious to first glance that's different about this machine from most gyros. Well, um, when you take a look at a twin star, um, one of the distinguishing features that um, you might notice is it has two very tall vertical stabilizers. Uh, a comment that I often get is it looks like a Star Wars TIE fighter coming in, and that gives you some very good control. Um, it also allows the engine to come down and give you a, a nice line of thrust because we don't have a keel for the prop to bump into. What's different about that, though, is that most gyro pilots are used to having a rudder directly in the prop stream. Mm -hmm. So that is different with the Twin Star. With the Twin Star, the rudder is not in the prop stream. So on a day like today with a strong crosswind landing, uh, we want to keep a little speed on when we're making a landing instead of making a zero roll landing like some of the guys with the rudder in the prop stream make. Outside of that, it flies pretty much the same as a large two place, a dreadnought class gyroplane. Well, Tim, thanks for taking some time out. I know that as VP of the organization, when there's a convention going on, you have people pulling you every which way, but it's great to get some background on the Twin Star. My pleasure.